Hi, this is Isaac from the dedicated serverhandbook.com. And following up on the lessons that we got from the past few days, today we are going to learn to set up a basic website from start to finish. And we're going to be using the popular open source WordPress platform to do it. Now, I'm going to tell you in advance before everyone starts jumping up on me with all these sorts of rude comments that this is not necessarily the only way to do it. It's not even necessarily the best way to do it. However, since this entire tutorial series is based on Webmin, what we're going to do is we are going to do this 100% through the Webmin interface. Now, I know that a lot of the things I'm going to do are going to be strange, but even if you're one of those people who prefers the command line and doing things the normal way, you'll still have a chance to learn alternative ways of doing it because we're going to use some pretty interesting commands just to avoid ever having to use an interactive shell. So to get started, we I've already gone over installing and doing the post install of Webmin, and I've also already taken care of the DNS. So what's left for us is to create a user, create a website, and everything in between. So let's get started. I'm going to log on to Webmin using my username of user and my remembered password. Now. This is a stock installation I made a few days ago of a VPS package that's offered from the website at the www.thededicatedserverhandbook.com. This is pretty much exactly how you could expect to get a server from our server packages if you ever ordered one. And so we're going to go to unused modules and find the Apache web server. and install it. Next, we're going to install the MySQL database server. Okay, and we're done. <clears throat> and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to install PHP, which we're going to need. Great, now we have everything that we need uh, installed on the system. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new uh, FTP user for the, and start working. So create a new user. We're going to call this user my brand new domain.com. We're going to leave the shell as bin uh, sh because we're going to need it soon. And we're going to give it a password. Great. As we can see, we've created the new user, mybrandnewdomain.com. And now we're going to download WordPress. We're going to take the URL that we could get from the WordPress.org website, HTTP www.wordpress.org latest.tar.gz We're going to put it in home my brand new domain.com slash www created if needed and we're going to make it owned by by the user my brand new domain.com Actually, better yet, since we're going to want to put the website content inside www, let's go back and let's just put it over here and download. Okay, now we've successfully downloaded WordPress. Next, we're going to go to the command shell. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our new created directory. And now we're going to extract the version of WordPress that we just downloaded. Next, we're going to switch the WordPress directory for www. 
so that uh, Apache will be able to pick it up later. Finally, we're going to change the ownership of that entire new www directory to our new user. Now we're ready to go set up Apache. We are going to create a virtual host. Any address, the document root is going to be home. My brand new domain dot com www. And we're going to say that the server name for this is www dot my brand my brand new domain dot com. And that's it. If we apply the changes, next we're going to go set up MySQL database server. Since WordPress uses MySQL, we're going to set up the database and database user that WordPress is going to need soon during the installation. You know, there are lots of better tools to use than than Webmin's interface for MySQL. Uh, and in the dedicated server handbook, we talk a lot about using PHP MyAdmin, which is much friendlier. But here's what we're going to do, just for the sake of example. Now, in a real world scenario, based on the way we install the MySQL database, as you can see here, we have lots of root users with no password. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to delete these two root users. And we're going to change the password on this root user. Okay. Now we get this. We get this error now because we just changed the password. So, and now uh, it'll ask us what to use to connect. So we're going to enter the username and password that we just set. And now we could get back into the MySQL database server. The next thing that we're new is we're going to create a new database. We're going to call the new database WordPress. And we're not going to give it any, uh, any information except for the character set, which we're going to give UTF-8 to make sure that we can support uh, international uh, characters. Finally, we're going to create a new user. We're not going to give it any permissions here because we're going to give them permissions inside on the database we gave it. So let's create the user. Okay, so we've created the user. We're going to go back to the database list. Now we're going to go to database permissions to give the new user permissions on the database. We're going to create a new database permissions on the WordPress database for the WordPress user. And we're going to give it select, insert, update, delete, create, drop, Manage indices, alter, create, lock tables, create view, show view, create routine, alter routine, and execute. That's basically all the privileges needed. All right, now with Apache and MySQL set up, it's time to go visit our new uh, 
WordPress website. There's just one last thing that we have to take care of for, and that is going to be to make the new www directory writable by the web server so that it can create the WordPress setup file. So we're going to go back to others command shell and we're going to run schmod 777 on my brand new .com, www. Now let's go and visit our new WordPress website. Okay, and here's our Brent Blink WordPress site. We're going to create a configuration file. The database name is WordPress. The username is WordPress. The password is the password that we set before. The database host is local host, and we're ready to rock and roll. We hit submit, and whoa, we've got an error. All right, I'm doing this live, so I guess I'm entitled to some mistakes. Let's go and check the MySQL database server. And we're going to go back, and we can see that the WordPress user exists, uh, database exists, and we can see that the WordPress user exists. And maybe this is the problem. Let's set this to localhost. Save. And let's go back to WordPress. So let's try that again. WordPress. One, two, three, four, five, six. And submit. And here we go. WordPress is all ready to be installed. Now, site name is going to be my brand new domain. And the username will be admin. And the password, you guessed it. Same thing we've been using the whole way. My email is again the dedicated server handbook.com. And let's install WordPress. Now let's go to our new website. And here we go. We have a brand new WordPress installation.